I've seen far too many businesses burn through thousands of dollars on AI tools that don't work. And the sad thing is, is they could have found that out within the first week. And this almost always happens for one very specific reason. So in this video, I'm giving you the reality check that I wish somebody would have given me. It's a simple framework that allows you to evaluate any AI product to see if it's worth your time and money before you spend even a single dime. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so by applying this process, you're able to understand where real value sits and you can kind of avoid the snake oil salesmen that sit within the vertical AI space for selling vertical AI products to enterprises. And the idea here is to get faster results through this process of evaluation so you can get to applying an AI product that actually works for your use case and saving money and time on things that don't. So what is the process? Well, the process is straightforward. There's three steps. First off, you need to define what good looks like. So you need to measure exactly what you expect of the AI for this specific task. We'll talk about that more in a second. After you've defined good, then you wanna create a series of evaluations that are binary. And you wanna create these evals so you can measure your AI's ability to achieve this specific metric you've set beforehand. After you've gone through that process, by the end of it, you'll understand how to measure the AI's ability to achieve given task so you can decide faster if it's something you wanna pursue. And that's the process. So like I said, we wanna define good. So how do we define good? Well, anytime you're looking at a given AI product, there's probably some sort of ROI you expect from it. So if I'm gonna pay for this product, I expect it to automate a given task and give me a certain amount of time back or to generate X amount of revenue within a given time or something along those lines. That's gonna be your primary metric, the thing you care most about. Beneath this are gonna be a series of sub goals that make up that primary metric, both of which we're gonna create evals for. And the important thing I wanna call out in this slide is that we're not looking for perfect because oftentimes AI isn't perfect. But what we're looking for is a meaningful improvement off of our baseline of how we do a given activity today. So maybe today it takes us 25 people to answer 100 calls per day. But if we could get that down to say 25 people can answer 5,000 calls a day because AI is augmenting them, then that's a, that's a really huge improvement, a meaningful improvement off of the baseline. It's not perfect, but it's better. Now we know what good looks like or have a general idea of how to go about assessing what good is for a given product. Let's talk about evaluations really quick, specifically the binary aspect. So why do I keep on emphasizing binary? Well, oftentimes when you look at evaluations, there's off the shelf evals that one can purchase and or repurpose from other vendors. I recommend not doing that. We'll talk more about as to why not to do that, but one key thing is binary. Reason being is that a lot of these vendors, they give you evaluation criteria that are on a spectrum. So it's usually one to 10 or maybe A to B or something along those lines. It sits on a spectrum. And too many times I've seen a lot of different teams debate and argue over a difference between a seven or an eight or arguing is C plus good enough. And the thing with a spectrum is there's a lot of subjectivity around what's good enough and or what's the difference between a seven and an eight. Now with a binary evaluation, it's very clear. It's either true or false, yes or no. It's understandable that if the AI achieved this task or not. And that's why it's important to strive for binary evaluation. And sometimes I'll get people pushing back saying that, oh, well, binary evals don't apply to my use case. I trust you. If you think hard enough, you'll find binary evals that fit your use case. I've seen it happen time and time again on a variety of different products. Oh, hey, this video is brought to you by me. So two things. One, below is a link to a free 30-day AI insight series. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox of how to apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, there's different types of offerings below to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. With that being said, let's dive back in. Now, one other key point that I'll call out here. So I've already talked about the binary piece and why that's important. But the next thing I want to talk about is you create. So I mentioned that you can get off the shelf evaluation criteria from other vendors, either for free or for paid. I recommend not doing that. And the reason you want to avoid this, instead of getting packaged generic evals, you need to create custom ones for your use case. Because 99% of the time, the evals that these vendors provide are irrelevant to what you have and what you care about for your specific needs and your specific use cases. And also the exercise of going through the process of creating your evaluation criteria helps you better understand the metrics that matter to you. And also it helps you better define what good is for this specific product. And I, and I added three O's to good because that's how good it is. Okay, enough of that. So now let's jump into examples. I'm gonna walk you through a variety of examples that show you the AI product, the evals, and the metrics. So this first one here is going to be a contract review assistant. So this is gonna be a legal oriented use case. And the goal is, is that we have an AI product that can review contracts for us. And our primary goal with buying this product 
is to have the AI catch at least 95% of contract issues up front faster than our lawyers can. So if this is our primary goal, then here are some binary evals that link to that. So the first one is we're gonna run a test. We're gonna take 20 contracts and we're gonna see if it can at least identify the most risky clauses in 19 of them. So that shows a high accuracy rate on a binary eval. Now, obviously you need to define what risky stands for and your legal team can do that. But once you've identified that criteria, then you can test the AI against this and see, can it get 19 out of 20? And the next one is seeing, okay, when the AI looks at a contract, can it catch the missing terms, the things that should always be there, such as termination clauses, liability clauses, et cetera, and can it do it every single time? So this is, again, you would take 20 to 50 contracts, you would run it through it and say, did it, did it identify any missing criteria that should always be inside of a contract? Yes, no. And these are just two eval criteria that will get us closer to understanding if the AI can achieve the given task that we set for it. Now, our bonus goal or our secondary goal here is around timing. So can we reduce the amount of time it takes to review a contract below 15 minutes. Let's say right now it takes our lawyers around 90 minutes to review a contract, any given contract. So can we get it down to less than 15? So some binary evals we can associate to that. So our first one is very straightforward because it's directly connected to the goal. What we'll do is we'll time our lawyer and say, how long does it take our lawyer to review the AI summary? Is it less than 15 minutes or not? Yes, no. Then after that, we can ask ourselves, when the AI summary gets given back to our lawyer, does it contain all of the key sections in the first page so it's easier for a lawyer to assess this faster? And again, these are things you'll need to define. So what is the key section and how do you define that? Your lawyers can do that. Once you've created that criteria, that rubric, then you can assess your AI's ability to put all of that in the first page at any given time. Now that's our first example. Our second example here is around customer service chatbots. So this is a chatbot for an AI that is a 24 seven support agent. And our goal with this chatbot is since we run an e-commerce store, an e-commerce company, the goal here is basically to ensure that we can reduce our support ticket volume by 40% so we don't have to put that burden on our support team. And if this is our goal, then we can set a series of binary evaluation criteria to ensure that we can reach it with our AI product. So the first one, can the AI solve at least four of 10 issues without any human interference? So it's completely autonomous, four out of 10, yes, no. After that, can it handle at least eight of 20 common questions that we get from our clients day in and day out completely without any human intervention? So again, we can create these 10, 20 questions and we can then ask the AI on a subset of use cases and different variations, can it answer it eight out of 20 times in each one of those tests? If yes, great. If no, we need to reassess. And then below this, we have our bonus goal or our secondary goal, which is attached to our primary goal. And that's ensuring that our customer satisfaction score stays above 80%. And there are many different ways we can assess this metric with binary evals. So our first one here is that eight out of 10 conversations, the human states that the conversation with the AI was good or better than previous conversations. And then again, another way to evaluate this is at least less than two out of 10 conversations, the human asks for another human immediately and tries to get past the AI. Yes, no. So that's our second example. And our third and final example for today is going to be a sales email personalizer. So this is basically an AI that sends out cold emails for us for cold outreach and is helping us potentially increase our overall sales. So the primary goal that we're setting out for this is for cold email outreach, we're trying to go from 2% to 4% when it comes to overall email responses. So can we double our email responses for cold outreach? And the way we can assess this clearly with binary evals is that if we send out 100 emails that have the personalization from AI, do we get four or more replies back from those 100 emails we sent? Another clear eval that we can run associated to this is ensuring that every single email that's sent for a prospect has a mention of some form of personalization based off of the AI's research. So this again could be a yes, no answer. So our secondary goal that's connected to our primary goal is how unique the opening line is in every single email that we send because we have a personalization piece that the AI is going to provide here. And the way that we can assess this, there's a series of evals that we could set for this that are binary, one of which would be taking a simple sampling. So we're going to look at 50 emails that we sent that go to a similar type of persona, and we're going to assess the openings and ensure that each one of those are somewhat unique. And this is actually something you could do with AI to help you with it. Another binary eval here is ensuring that every single opener has something that's been pulled specifically from the prospects LinkedIn and or their website to ensure that it's personalized to them. This is again, you can do a sampling of 50 to 100 to ensure that they are unique and connected to that source. That's again, a yes, no eval. 
And these are just a few examples. There's many that I could share with you right now, but I want you to just get a clear understanding of the difference between setting a primary goal, a secondary goal, and having binary evals associated to each so it's easier for you to assess the quality of an AI product for the use case you care about. And again, just as a reminder, this is the process. So first, you need to set clear metrics. What does good look like for this AI product and your use case? Once you've set out your primary goal for this product and then maybe some secondary goals, then you want to assess them with binary evals that you've created yourself because they need to be personalized to your use case. And then what you're going to do is you're going to assess the AI's product against these evaluation criteria, likely in the free trial period that these AI products are going to offer you. So you don't have to waste a bunch of money and time. And when you assess it in the trial period, you can then confidently either walk away from the product and or confidently pay for the product, knowing that it's going to achieve the given goal you've given to it. Because remember, we're not going for perfect, we're going for meaningful improvements. As this beautiful slide states, stop guessing and start measuring. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, share with your friends. And also two things. One is the 30 day AI insight series. So you can get a free link below that gives you 30 insights in your inbox of how to apply AI to your business and your work. Second thing is if you'd like to work with me, there's a series of offerings below to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. With that being said, I think around here, there's probably a video that you'll probably love because the YouTube God says so. So check it out.